The following program will make you want to grow things and experience new and wonderful dreams about your plants, garden, and garden design. Listener participation is always strongly advised. And welcome to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101. To get on board by telephone, dial 905 725 1907. Toll free in North America, 1 866 905 7325. Send us an email right now. Our email address is in studio 101 at gmail.com. And now, right to your hosts of Down the Garden Path, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Thank you and welcome everyone to another live episode. We're live and in person tonight. Yes. Um, <laughs> welcome to Down the Garden Path, where each week we discuss down-to-earth tips and advice for your plants, gardens, and landscapes. As landscape designers and gardeners, we think it is important and possible to have great gardens that are low maintenance, and we want to help you make it happen. I'm Joanne Shaw, landscape designer and owner of Down to Earth Landscape Design for the past 11 years. It is currently a design-only business here east of the GTA. With me is my co-host, Matthew Dressing. Welcome, Matthew. <gasps> Welcome, Joanne. Good evening, everyone. And I am Matthew Dressing, horticulturist and landscape designer and owner of Natural Affinity Designs. Natural Affinity is a landscape design and garden maintenance firm servicing Toronto and the Eastern GTA. Joanne and I enjoy doing Down the Garden Path each week, bringing you interesting, relevant, and helpful topics to help you achieve a great garden. We learn right along with you from each other, from our research, and from the guests that join us here on the show. As always, we welcome your questions via social media, emails, or phone calls. That's right, and we want to thank you once again. Uh, for joining us down the garden path and let you know if this is your first time or if this is the first time catching the beginning of the show, we'll let you know that you can always check out our past shows of down the garden path on your favorite podcast app. This show will be released later this week. And so if you subscribe to our podcast, then you'll always be notified when we release a new show and uh, you can look back at all of our past shows, right? Exactly. Tune in, like, share, leave us a comment. Uh, we always appreciate your yes, feedback. Yes, definitely, definitely. So, uh, so. Well, tonight's show. Yes. We talked about it before, um, but we know it's been a heavy Japanese beetle season here in the GTA. It has. It has. And you had a few weeks ago, you had a sh whole show on Japanese beetles. We did. So that is a prime example. If our listeners are having issues with, with the Japanese beetles and you missed that show, please look back uh on our website or on your podcast app for the past uh, Japanese Beetle show. Matt did a, a, a solo show. Yeah. That's right. But tonight, yeah. we're going to get even deeper. Ha, ha, ha. Sorry. Couldn't well resist. <laughs> Couldn't resist. <laughs> well, as we know, because the Japanese Beetles, mm -hmm. uh, they're laying eggs. And uh, it's the time of season where they're going to hatch. And as we know, they become our white grubs in the lawn. Right. So here in Canada, there's only one thing we can really do uh, as homeowners to really take care of those uh, uh, white grubs directly. Right. And that's nematodes. So we're going to talk about uh, nematodes here on the show this evening. Um, that's yeah. right. And I hope our listeners, if you're, we know that the Japanese beetles lay eggs and they become grubs, but I'd love to hear from our listeners if you realize that those two garden paths were related. 
So, because uh, I don't think everybody does no, uh, the connection. You're right. Yeah, you know? I, in the store, and yeah. that's one of their. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think that is really cool. Um, and we will mention we were scheduled to have a guest yeah. on the show to talk about it, um, and unfortunately that has fallen through. But Matthew and I are still equipped, and uh, um, Matthew can update us on what's happening in the garden center. And I know that's what's a lot of questions are happening about the nematodes. So we've got a lot of information here that we still can share with everyone. And we'd love to answer your questions too, right? That's right. If you've had trouble with them, if you think that they don't work or why they don't work, mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to hear from you. And, and we're going to talk all about that. And, and a few nematodes that maybe you didn't know you could use in the garden for That's other right. issues. That's right. We'll explore those as well. Yeah. And for our Canadian listeners, um, you know, we are not allowed to use any of the systemic uh, chemicals to kill grubs. Uh, no longer in Canada. Yeah. And I'm sure there's some areas in the U.S. that that's the case. Or if there's homeowners that are, even though you're quote unquote allowed to and you want to seek out an alternative, more of an environmentally friendly alternative and learn more about nematodes, then uh, this is the show for you as well. Exactly. If you have any questions or you want to share what you're using or what you're using in the States or you found around Canada, don't forget to write us at instudio101 at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Take pictures, send pictures. Um, yes. Uh, and yeah, and we, we love interacting with you guys. So That's thanks right. for joining us this Monday evening. So, what is ha so aside from Japanese beetles and yeah. nematodes, what's happening at the garden center? That it's still that still is is the big one. Big one. It is still the big one. Plants are slowing down. There's still great selections out there. We're starting to see some sales occur uh, at our garden center, but also kind of industry wide. A lot of places don't have places to return stock to. They right. grow with their own. They do have to clear it out, so mm -hmm. they have room for fresh stuff for you. Uh, so we are starting to see some sales. Fall is happening, most certainly. Uh, fall, you can see it in all the home decor stuff. I'm thinking like Michael's is the one that I like to go to oh, often. Oh, really? Is uh, the fall stuff there? Fall stuff's there. Oh. Christmas is out oh, there. Oh, don't. I, I can't even say I, I got a text from my mom about some, like, because ribbon, because I'm like the bow maker in the yeah, family. Yeah. And there's some great sander ribbon that I'm dying to go get tomorrow. Oh, so okay. I'll be hitting there. But at the garden centers, we're starting to get our fall wreaths. The mums are appearing. Just be careful with the mums. It is still August. Yeah. They are cool weather yes. plants. They will blow the more, the warmer they are. Right, right. So, so, yeah. So, unless you super absolutely have to have them, right. try to hold right. off on getting the mums. Yeah. If you know yeah. there's a color that this, whatever garden center you go to, they have a color that's short, uh, treat it as like a shade plant. Give it bright, indirect light, but keep it cool to slow it down. Yeah. And always buy them when they're really, really tight in bud. That's yes. the better way to buy them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, mums in fall. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. We are this is in the garden center industry it tends to be kind of a transition period and we start yeah. to slow down. We're waiting for fall to really kick in right at about Labor Day and then we're gonna move into Halloween and Christmas. Yeah. That's pretty our quickly. next May two four weekend. Yeah, and it's pretty quick. So mm. that's kind of what's happening there, but people are still Japanese beetles and Japanese beetle traps and yeah. all those questions are still hot. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And what about watering, like any other I mean um, Yeah, people are it's still been so warm. Yeah, still warm. Watering, they're still buying, buying uh, watering equipment. They're still coming in for fertilizers and things like that. Right. And it's kind of eh, be careful what you're doing, but uh, how much. But yeah, yeah, okay. they're still out there, and there's still lots to do. Summer, you know, guys, we we can still plant. Yes. In summer, absolutely. Right? right. But as a culture, we like to vacation and vanish for like weeks at a time from our home. In and August. In yes. August, yeah. right? Yeah. And that big tree you just planted before you went away needs yeah. water, so. Uh, yeah, so definitely make sure you're there. Have someone to come over, or as we like to say, yes. you know, grab a tree gator. That's right, and tree that gator. That only help for so long, but still. Yes. Yep, definitely it's something. Yeah, so for yeah, sure. Lots for of sure. stuff to buy and exciting plants that are just coming into bloom. Excellent, so. excellent. Um, How about your garden? Because yeah. I hear you're underway. You've started some more work. Yeah, well, for a couple of things are happening in my garden. So one of my, my big main garden, which I call my health strip garden, where I've, you know, kind of uh, garden and right to the curb. And, you know, I've took out a lot of lawn and created this big garden. It's really doing well. Um, my Dawn Redwood that I planted last fall yeah. got off to a really slow start and still a little on the sparse side, but I think it's it's doing well. Um, but I also have a small garden kind of up the entranceway 
uh, like up my path uh, to the left of my path if you're going up. And I have a tricolor beach and I had mm. some quick little quick fire hedge. And but then I, you know, a couple of interesting rocks. But then I really was struggling a um, bit gr- few grade changes and things like that. I was just really struggling with what would go there. I had an old um, rose gold Barbary that, you know, ended up growing and c- eating anybody who came up the path <laughs> and stuff. So I got that taken care of a few years ago. Anyway, so I did um, actually at your garden center, I found something called, and I'm not a cedar fan at all, and I'm certainly not a globe cedar fan, so <laughs> I don't even want to know that these are related, but because uh, it's a completely different leaf, like a different needle texture. Um, Mr. Bowling Ball, they are related. I know you're going to double check that. Oh, Mr. Bowling <laughs> Ball uh, Cedar. So they're going to stay two by two, and uh, which is nice because I didn't want the problem with the Rose Glow Cedar, like Rose Glow Barbary, which uh, one of the many problems was that it just took over and then you couldn't see the really cool, interesting rocks that I had. So these are going to stay quite nice. And uh, I added some bee balm. Uh, can't remember the variety, but it was a kind of a different, more of a deeper burgundy color, which I think are with behind them is the uh, little quick fires. So mm. I'm just just a teeny like it's funny that sometimes it's a small space and it and it's and you just can't I just couldn't get it right. Um, so I'm really happy that I got that done. Um, and my more exciting news, we could talk the whole show about. Sorry, Gary, I know it's not all about me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) My backyard. So we've been waiting for several years since we moved in. Uh, The previous owners had put in a pool and put in not so great um, patio with um, not properly installed flagstone. So uh, we live with that for 13 years now and a deck that was, you know, all splintery and things like that. So that's all being ripped out and new coping around the pool and new patio. So I'm nice. excited. So not uh, nothing too creative. Unfortunately, I can't be back there. But um, I'm just hoping, excited to get it all cleaned up, have proper retaining walls so the patio is not leaning against the fence. The drainage, the making sure the slope is proper and not draining towards the house. You know, all those little... So they're not fun things necessarily, but they're all really important things. Yeah. Oh, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah they're so. important things. It's yeah. nice to see some change and freshen for it sure, up. For sure. For sure. obviously very long-weighted. So yes. Yes. That's definitely. News. Definitely. You know, all the other host stuff, right? Like the roof and the furnace and yeah. the, all those <laughs> other important things that have to get done first. So, yeah. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see it finish. Nice. And I've been patiently waiting or kind of impatiently waiting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for my contractor to get there. Hopefully he's not listening. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what's happening in my place. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Um, mine's is kind of like the garden center, kind of in a transition. Yes. I'm deadheading. I'm enjoying the nasturtiums that yes, I'm Yes, which I never did grow. I told you I was going to bring you some, uh, too. You did so tell me that. And so I didn't, so that's my fault. Not okay. <laughs> Well, truth but be told, I did buy some and let them die in the driveway. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. So, oops. Maybe um, next year. Yeah, maybe yeah. next year. So, I'm right. just waiting for my potatoes to fatten yes, up. Yes, how's your potatoes? Okay. They're still looking good and everything's just kind of blooming and I'm just... Tomatoes? Really did, are you, did you grow tomatoes this year? I didn't know. No. Okay. I did. I tried. I started one and then it, it kind of failed. So, I replaced it with something else. Oh, okay. But I, I guess my big show this year is um, my canna Cleopatra. So it's uh, a green leaf and a burgundy leaf, and it just kind of randomly uh, marbles itself oh, and okay. gets big swaths and bright red flowers, and it's just growing like a weed, and it's spectacular. Oh, so wonderful! Those are my potatoes. So yeah, yeah, there's nothing really to report. Oh, is okay, all I'm saying. okay. Well, our veggies, um, we grew zucchinis for the first time. Oh, and how did that? Oh go? my gosh, we I had no idea. I have to admit that I thought it would be a vine like the cucumbers, and it turns into the shrub basically with amazingly beautiful leaves. Oh my goodness. So, yes, so that's been good. Um, we need to start dropping off. Um, apparently, la- this past week was um, give your neighbor a zucchini yeah. day. So we have to do that. And um, our cucumbers, so things are struggling. The peppers seem to be, I think, loving this heat. So peppers are all doing well. My tomato plant has got a lot of tomatoes. Um, nothing is even turning any like any shade of red. Um, so I did some pruning of them, actually, to get make some more light on them, hoping that would help. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so... Very nice. Yeah, very good. Oh, we've got a question. Oh, we do. Yes. Karen writes in, hi, Joanne and Matthew. What a coincidence. I was just going to go online to find out about nematodes. And she tuned in here at the same time. Uh, I really do not understand much about them or what they do. Perfect topic for tonight. Thank you. Listening from Waterloo, Ontario. Hey, Karen, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thank you very much. And it is timely. It Absolutely. is. Absolutely. 
My brother lives in Waterloo. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, hi, Karen. <laughs> um, and Larry's just wrote it, written. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Larry has written it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, so glad that you're on the air this evening. Looking forward to the nematode discussion. Love your advice. Thanks. Thank you very much, Larry. Thank you, Larry. So, what should we do? Let's dive right in. Okay, right so in. what? So we want to make sure everybody heard at the beginning of the show how the Japanese beetles are invading our gardens, and they're about to lay eggs, and those eggs then, be, which seems weird because of the size difference, but those eggs yeah. become the white grubs. Right, and they've laid eggs. Okay, they've already laid the eggs? Right. Mum is laying one to six eggs every 24 to 36 hours. Right. Okay. She can travel up to a kilometer to do it. So that's where you get the myth where you put a trap out and they're all coming in. Mum's moving all the time. Okay. Laying eggs. So mum's laid her eggs. Okay. Uh, they're in your lawn and they take two to three weeks to hatch. And okay. They crack open and a little baby gr- grub that'll sit in the, the whole size of your pinky fingernail. Okay. So like a teeny tiny little caterpillar. Really, really right. small caterpillar. So right now they're not going to be doing a whole much, a bunch of damage. You can dig and take a look right now. But you might not even see them. You may not even find them. They're so tiny, they're going to be right in the soil surface. Okay. So there's not much damage out there now. If you do have um, damage that is looking like white grubs, we were saying before as well on the podcast that it's chinch bugs. Oh, okay. Or cinch bugs, whatever it is. Because they do identical (laughs) damage. (laughs) Okay. Um, And they're like a little like flea-sized beetle. They're very small with a little white diamond on their back. But they do the same thing. So if you see grub, quote, unquote, grub damage now, it's probably chinch bug. Oh, okay. So take a look at that. Because they haven't done lots and lots of piles of damage just yet. Now, are the chinch... Because what is the one that... I don't think it's chinch bug that, you know, when you open your screen door and the light on and they, they're they the big they look like giant mosquitoes that's not them they're uh crane flies or leather okay. jackets and we actually have a nematode solution for those oh we'll talk about okay well. good so we'll get to that okay uh, yes. i called them mosquito hawks because they look yeah, like just a big mosquito yeah yeah they're just creepier i think because they're so big yeah 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 definitely okay so if your lawn is being damaged now do the rec animals kind of go looking for the chinch bug or they don't. No, no good question. Because okay. they will for the white grub. Right. Right. They but will not, probably not grub. now. Probably when they get nice and fat and juicy, right? Right. So in the spring, you'll often wake up to spring and you'll find like suddenly overnight there's holes all over your lawn. Right. And the skunks, raccoons, the crows, and the ravens will smell and search. They know that they're there and they'll okay. dig them in. All right. Um, yeah. So at that point, I would just let them clean it out. Let them do their thing. They're pretty thorough. They can smell them through in the soil. They'll dig them all out. Okay. And you usually have cured your nematode problem, your really? grub problem. They're okay. Now you just good. have a lawn problem. But now yeah, you have that's a, a whole other episode, though. That's Matt. a whole other episode. So check out past episodes. <laughs> that's right. On how to fix your lawn. That's um. right. <laughs> so nematodes. Yes. In Canada, and write us in the States what you guys are, are using. We'd love love to hear, and mm-hmm. uh, we can tell our Canadian listeners, because I get a lot of people in the garden say, well, what else is there? Right. So so let us know what's new and exciting in the States. Uh, we'd love to hear you from you at instudio101 at gmail.com. But we have nematodes. So nematodes are a parasitic microscopic worm. Okay. So they're basically like a big single cellular type thing. Uh, they have a bacteria in them, and there are many, many different types of nematodes. So the nematodes that you see or that or that we're applying are mm-hmm. going to be species specific. Okay. They're going after the white fleshy grubs. They're going after little like ant larvas, the little eggs and, mm-hmm. and, and things like that. So you do have to touch the nematodes when you prep them. And that's why I preface this with species specific. If you go into the tropics down south, you can walk in areas where bare feet with bare feet and they will actually burrow into your foot. Yes, and you'll have a big, long, like, earthworm, like, imprint on the bottom of your foot. And I believe there's some species that, that it stay small, and they, like, make a blister. And as they infect your foot, they eat the pus as your, your foot tries to heal them. So you can get human nematodes, but these ones won't hurt you. Okay. They yeah. will not hurt That's you. That's prep facade, yes. I, st- I think I still used rubber gloves when I did it the first time. Yeah. Because you can't see them. Like, it really, you're just handling a sponge. Yes. Right? And you can't see them, which... 
in a way is almost creepier. Mm. Um, that there's something there that you can't see that's going to then eat something that you can see. Right. I don't know. It's kind of creepy. It is. And, and we know. let our imagination go wild, yeah. right? Yeah. So when, when we're doing it, it's really creepy because it's like untouching this thing and yes. what it does to the grubs. And we'll tell you about that. Yeah. Um, but then it also it kind of plays on the other side, I feel. And I think that's where a lot of the anger comes from. Well, I couldn't see it to begin with. And I put it down and the great grubs are still there. Right. Okay. And it's like... Okay, but yes, so. yeah, because there is a trick to doing it, and there it is. isn't a once and done. Like that is the challenge with something that's more quote unquote environmentally friendly. It's not like a chemical where you've got almost guaranteed success, right? Right. So that's why we felt like the show was good. It's timely, um, and we're always trying to help, right, and help everybody improve. Um, so give you some tips and tricks. Yeah, I love the tea bag trick. I found that really helped me. Yeah, when yeah. I did it. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so that's what we're here for. So we want your questions and your concerns or your horror stories if you have <laughs> horror stories um, regarding your uh, your experience. So mm -hmm. um, so Mike has written in and he says uh, nematodes. Yay! I had a ton of grubs last year. Help! Excellent. So we're happy to help. Yes. We're here for you, Mike. Yes. So a couple of the key things. So for your typical nematodes that are for the white grubs, right? We will talk about some of the other nematodes that are available. Right. Um, but I would say probably the biggest key, one is timing. Right. Yes. And two is kind of prepping the lawn. Yes. Right? Agreed. It's Yes. Okay. So why don't you go over what's our time frame? Yeah. So timing is, um, like we said, there's chinch bugs out now. The grubs are coming out. So we're going to apply them anytime mid-August Okay. to the end of October. As it gets cold, the grubs are going to go further down in the soil. Right. And vanish for the winter, and they will come back. Yeah. So after Thanksgiving, don't you think? Like yeah, kind of, usually. you know, that's, I think when I did it, I did it Thanksgiving weekend, and it was kind of like the last. You're right on the You end never know, it. though. Like, I know it could warm up in after Thanksgiving, but. You right. know, it's kind of a just I think it's good to have that deadline in your head. Yeah. Right. Once it starts to cool down, even if it does warm up, it's kind of like the land and water. Right. It takes a little yeah. warmer, longer to warm up kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. They will they will go down and they will stay down. OK. So that's the time frame we can do it now. Okay. Um, but the other time frame within the time frame is doing it in the evening. Ah. Right. OK. So as we say, with the nematodes are there, you're going to find them in a sponge usually mm -hmm. in the fridge. They are the better ones. Uh, you can find them in the globes, but make sure they're really, really fresh. Okay. There were our expir expiration dates on them, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, but the ones that aren't kept in the fridge, they tend to speed through their life cycle, much like a mum, right? The cooler, the warmer they are, the faster they go. Right. Right. Uh, so use the ones that are in the fridge. And we're going to do it at night because we're going to mix them with water. Okay. And we're going to apply it onto the lawn. And when you apply them, they're sitting in the water droplets that are still on the lawn. But if you do it in the middle of the day or in the morning, you're blasting out that water across your lawn. And the sun and the wind are evaporating and killing these nematodes. Ah. They're wiping them out as okay. as we apply them. So nighttime, we know we're going to get enough down. So anywhere like dusk, basically. Okay. At this time of year, it's probably still like 7.38 yep. and moving forward. Okay. Now, shouldn't you also, so it, before you water the grubs in, like what, not right. watering them in a dry, bone dry lawn, right? Yeah. Isn't the secret to also have the, draw, the lawn already fairly prepped of nice and wet? Yeah, you got yes. it. So you're, like you're saying, like, so there's a timing and then there's a preparation. Right. So the right. prepping, these guys are swimmers. They okay. use water to move around through the soil. Usually when you buy the nematodes, there's two or three different species. And some will stay right at the surface. Okay. Some will go a few inches further down. And then some of them will go like three to four inches down. And some will go anywhere from three to six inches down. Right. But they all travel by water. Ah. So like you were saying, for the preparation, we always recommend watering your lawn for 30 to 40 minutes ahead of time. Okay. You want to get it nice and moist, nice and, and wet. Then you're going to mix the nematodes and apply them. Okay. And then you're going to water your lawn again. Because remember, the water, now we've applied the nematodes. And we'll talk about that in, in great detail in just a second. Um, but as you apply the nematodes, the water that now is left on the so on the surface, on mm -hmm. the gra grass, you can see glistening. That all contains nematodes. Okay. So we need to push them into the soil. Mm, okay. Yes. So. All right. <laughs> So, and the sponge thing, I think, is throws people off, too. Right. So the method, actually, um, so now you've, you've waited until after dinner. <laughs> yes. You've made sure while you were having dinner, you were watering your lawn, right? Or if you have an irrigation system, run the irrigation system, it, you know, reset it so it runs at, at dinner time. 
and uh, or rent a sprinkler or something like that, right? Yeah, do it manually. And somehow. so then you need a clean bucket, I would say, right? Like Correct. not a bucket that Javex was just in or cl- your floor cleaner was just in. So really starting with a clean bucket of water. Mm. And um, I can't remember if it had to be warm or cold or if that mattered. I don't think it mattered, did it? It doesn't like usually. hose water. Yeah, because okay. usually tap water is 23 degrees Celsius. Okay. So that's plenty warm. It feels yeah. cold to us because we're 36 degrees. Right, yeah. right. You get science. <laughs> science. Um, and so then we doesn't matter how much water we put in the bucket right or is there okay. right so when you get the sponges you'll yes. usually get two nowadays there'll be right. two sponges in there and each will do um you're going to apply each sponge into two liters of water so ultimately for one package it's going to have two sponges okay and you need four liters of water okay. and this four liters is going to by be diluted again into a hose end sprayer right that'll c- ultimately cover three thousand square feet Okay, so if your yard isn't that big, so you want to use one sponge Correct. with two liters of water. So put two liters of water in the bucket. Right. Put the sponge in the bucket. Right. And my little trick is yeah. also to put a tea bag, which will not harm the nematode, nope. but you put the tea bag in the bucket and just let that water kind of brown up a little bit, right? Yeah. And then that helps you when you then put the water in. So then you're going to scoop that water into the hose end sprayer. Right. Yep. Attach it to the hose. So then you will know it helps you know when you're out of product. Right. Yeah. Or when you need to s- scoop more in. Right. Because the the applicators are usually opaque. It's not like a crystal clear right. see through plastic. So right. the, that tint just kind of lets you watch the water level either dissolve if you have a reloading one with water. Right. Or most of the nematodes one is specific for nematodes. It'll drain. Yeah. And then you refill. Yes. Yeah. So right. that's an excellent tip. Yeah. So that is just kind of an easy thing. Every, usually everybody's got a tea bag at home or a teaspoon of uh, you know instant coffee or something like that. That just helps you know because otherwise you're you're watering and you're not sure like what's happening right so yeah so that's just been my experience i found that helpful yeah exactly because we're watering at night remember. right yeah. yes you're also watering at night so it just helps you and so yeah so then when that um is gone you know it's no longer brown right so then it's clear water because doesn't the hose water kind of recirculate in there and it depends on which one you have yeah right some of them okay do, and some then don't okay right Okay. Uh, so, and we've we've spoken to about natural insect control in the past. Their their ones just kind of drain. Okay. Right. Okay. So it depends on which ones ones you've got. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And again, you're using a clean. So I have one that I only use my nematodes in. So it's not the one right. you put the fertilizer in. It's not the one you put the the lime sulfur in. Uh, whatever. For your dormant spray. For your dormant spray in the <laughs> spring. You know. So this is for nematodes. And um, so then you are using that and it actually takes a long time to kind of spray it out. Like you are really like I remember thinking, oh, my God, yeah, <laughs> you know, it can take 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Yep. So you be prepared. <laughs> Find a podcast. But <laughs> that's a good time to listen to one of our past podcasts while you're uh, out there, because I can remember, you know, yeah, thinking, wow, this is really taking a while. But that's good. And so you will then scoop. So if you have the kind that drains or even if you have the one that just goes clear now and you know the tea is gone Mm -hmm. then you dump that water out and then scoop up more from your bucket and then water and keep going right right excellent and then after you have done all of the nematodes then you still need to water more right Right. even though it's evening right even though it's evening that water that you can still see glistening right in the dusk that has nematodes in it so we want to push them all down okay that package has usually 10 million nematodes in it okay so we need to get them down in there good all right yeah um, so one of uh, other tip, especially if you do have a small yard and you only need the one sponge for, let's say, your front and your back, you only need the one sponge, then offer your second sponge to your neighbor. Yeah. Because I think that is one reason I think a lot of people um, say that it didn't work or it, did, or it maybe worked a little bit, but it didn't work 100% is that if, especially if you're share especially if you're sharing the lawn with your neighbor yeah um but even if it's just across the driveway that type of thing they do travel those bugs the the japanese beetles travel like you said a kilometer did you say yeah we'll move up yeah. To a kilometer, yeah so it really helps if you can uh um, you know, get your neighbors on board. So uh, share this podcast with them, share the little pamphlet with them. I know when I did it two years ago, um, I couldn't convince my next door neighbor, but the person he shares the lawn with, he was convinced. So then he did his. And then last year, you know, so we all did it. And then we've talked about it again, because I think it really is a community 
to try and get the Japanese beetles and the the white grubs under control. Um, it, it you know it definitely, especially since you're oh, yeah. if you're in a neighborhood where everybody's like small you know small yards all close together. Um, you kind of have to, uh, there's no, you know, there's no way to cross a line that keep the nematodes on this side of the line, yeah. right? So it's better if there's a bit of an overlap. So that's something to consider. For sure. For sure. And if you have no one to, sp- to share with, yes, <laughs> uh, you can keep the other sponge, but you do want to keep it in the fridge. Right. And as long as the Japanese beetles are up, if you've even applied, say you've applied one sponge now, they're doing their thing. The beetles are still up and mom's still laying eggs. Okay. So you can keep the sponge for two to three weeks later. Or as long as within that expiry date and apply them again, because you'll have a whole second brood to do ah, it. So you can do it okay. again. Okay. So that could be a secret to success too, that right? That could also be a way. Yeah. So if we did it mid-August, you can do it again. You said two, like not mid-September, like not a month, but I guess re- reading the the best before date. Right, right, right. right. Within, yeah. As long as you're within the best before date. Right. And we're going to sell nematodes from NIC and we're going to get in... Um, the packages and their best before date's going to be like November 17th. Right. So th- they'll be quite a quite a thing. Okay. But as long as there are the grubs that are there, you can put your nematodes in. Okay. So hopefully that, that first bout, like Joanne said, cheer it because the first ones are going to spread out. They're going to multiply. They're going to do their thing. You're going to put right. so many in and so many are going to come out because that's how the grubs work or the nematodes work. I always flip those two words. Mm. Um, the nematodes are going to, sorry, go ahead. No, no. I was just, so if our listeners are questioning, so the nematodes are going down into the ground, like you said, through water yes. and they're basically eating They're are they eating the grubs? Are they just killing the grubs? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah, so well, obviously, <laughs> but yeah, but how, but how does that work? What does that look like? Right. Right. Yeah. So you've watered. Do we care? I don't know, but go ahead. Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> you're the science. I'm waiting for yeah, this Yeah. You're waiting for it. this part. <laughs> They yeah they're gonna water around they're gonna swim around some of them are gonna just kind of hang out and wait for grubs to appear okay uh, but they're gonna go into the white grub on their sides and their sphericals their breathing holes and basically they release as I said earlier they have a bacteria in them okay they're gonna release the bacteria and the bacteria is gonna liquefy the inside of the white grub okay so everybody excited about that yes. all right I like hope no one's eating paying dinner attention while Gary we <laughs> <laughs> the bacteria is gonna do its thing and then the, the nematodes are gonna feast on that slurry. Oh, okay. And the bacteria is going to divide. Slurry. And okay. they're going <laughs> to basically divide and, and eat, and they're going to ingest the new bacteria. So the more they, do they multiply because they, the more grubs they eat, then there's more nematodes? Right. So Really? Oh, okay. So a hundred, say a hundred nematodes go in this big, fat, juicy white grub. Okay. A thousand are going to come out. Oh, okay. They're going to multiply and break. So <laughs> that first sponge may be enough because okay. you put, say, down five million, mm-hmm. they all go in. And yeah, 50 million come out. Right. And they keep spreading and hunting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. Right. Okay. Now, we so we've watered before, we've watered them in, and we've watered after. Right. What about the next day? Yeah, we want to keep that soil, that upper two to three inches, moist pretty much for the least a week. Okay. So anywhere okay. from a good four to seven days. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't want to let them dry out, but they will make the kill fairly quickly. So it doesn't, you don't need to turn your backyard into a swamp okay. or your front yard to, just to keep the nematodes going. Okay. The other thing is we talked about in lawn care in the past, is keeping that lawn long, right? Right, so right. if it is long, that moisture we've just put down with the nematodes was actually going to last a little longer because it's going to be protected from the, the heat and the wind and the sun that's, that's blasting the soil level. Okay. And that'll keep your nematodes going. Okay. All right. So our window is for me- like this time, anytime next week, right? The, especially if they're, check if they're in stock because that tends to be the, the kicker, right? Like yeah. if we could go to, uh, do you have them in stock right now? I, I did. And okay. we sold out over the weekend. Okay. And I'm waiting for more. So, okay. Yeah. So just make sure uh, you check the best before date. Do we both do really suggest you get the fridge version? There are shelf stable ones, um, but yeah. check the, check the date. Uh, you know, they have made them so that they, you know, are some more stable, but I just think, you know, if, if it wasn't broke, why fix it? You know, go yeah. with the fridge one. And especially if you're going to do it pretty quickly. Mm. Right. And if you're not, you can keep it in your, they're in bags. Like you can, you're no problem. No worry about putting them in your own fridge oh, yeah, while yeah. you wait, uh, until a good day to do it. Yeah, That sounds gross, but there's, there's, they're double bag. There's no way yeah, they're it's coming out. ever going to get out unless you touch them and put them somewhere. Now temperature, like what if it's still too, uh, still quite warm? Does that matter? 
in it's the soil, more, you mean? Yeah, well, like the air. Or like if it's, you know, we get another little hot spell next week or the end of this week, right? Yeah. Does the temp, does that matter or is it just more the water that they need? Yeah, keep, yeah, if you've got your lawns really short, it's kind of dormant, that soil is going to be very warm. So that's okay. going to dry them out fairly quickly. Okay. And that might burn a few of them or a number of them out. Right. So yeah, keeping it moist and cutting it high okay. is going to be your best thing. Or yeah, if Waiting you know for it to cool, let them wait a few days. Right. Because right? as long as the soil is moist, then they don't dry out completely solid then they should be still viable and still be in there and active and do their their things okay yeah as long as there's some nice food there then they're good good yeah excellent um oh we got another question or a comment yeah monica writes in wow excellent explanation well thank you monica uh and she says thank you as well you make it easy so easy to understand nematodes what great advice thank you well, thanks, Monica. Yes, and nice yeah, Monica, you. I've been listening to this and reading about this and selling these and talking about them, but it, you know, it really and it almost like you get it a bit more when you actually do it, when you actually put it on mm-hmm. too. Um, but yeah, th- it's just one of those things. It's just weird because you can't see it working. You can't right. smell it like a chemical. You can't. So uh, so yeah, so it's almost like you're trusting that the sponge, you know. But the instructions are there in the packages. They're yep. very self-explanatory. Um, very helpful. You can put on a little latex glove if you don't want to squeeze the sponge with your bare hands, um, like me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I think um, that's exciting, and I think it's cool that we've come up with a solution to a problem that is more. There's no chemical. There's no harm to us. Yeah. Um, the previous uh, grub solutions were very chemical and very harsh they to the brutal. environment to us. Um, so again, I'd love to hear from some of our U.S. listeners on what you're using mm-hmm. um, and how you feel about it. Or if you see your community turning, uh, t- you know, it takes a little while to turn a community over to something like this. Yeah. Um, but I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. That's why for our Canadian listeners that they were banned, right? Right. Is you have this chemical you just put on the ground, it kills them all, but then we all do it as a preventative. So we do it again. And well, there's nothing there. So right. all that goes into the environment. Right. And then it's spring and let's do it again. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something that we don't, even with Roundup, you know, yeah, Roundup is still available here. And even though it's behind glass and you have to ask for permission. Um, and I've been always kind of on the fence. So use it if you have to use it. But more and more, I'm realizing that, you know, the runoff that goes into our water, mm. but more importantly, like the dogs that walk on it and the paws that come in the house. So we're thinking it's like out there or our neighbors are using it out there. Or it's outside and it's not going to impact my life inside. Um, but I think we're walking, uh, you know, on grass that has it. And then we're, you know, coming in, even your front mat, you're walking and wiping your feet or your animals are touching it and and things like that. So I'm really starting to think, you know, it's really not worth it, Mm -hmm. you know. So um, and I realize that there are some situations where you need to use it um, for sure. But um, yeah, you know, I'm less likely to want to use it between my patio stones or between my interlocking brick or that kind of thing. There are other viable, just as effective solutions that I don't know that they're just not. as effective right now, but they're mm, you know maybe. yeah. The, there's some promising things. I like Path Clear. Scott's Path Clear does does well. It's okay. more of a sixty two percent hort vinegar that I've done that pretty oh, well on okay. before. Yeah. Okay. So it, it like it's it's more of a fur foliage burner. It's not like Roundup where it's systemic. Right. But it'll it'll wipe them out pretty quickly too. Oh, okay. All right. Nice Maybe I should look for that. Yeah, take a okay. look at that. And okay. Yeah. And I, I got a lot of people with the weeds, especially in the garden centers, they have that path clear that or that, that patio thing. Yes. And they kill all the weeds and they're like, well, it's already back. Well, you've just knocked out the competition. Right. There's all those weed seeds that you are blowing into the cracks. Yes. Right. That that one plant is trapping. And yes. Stopping, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you talk to them about the polymeric sand and stuff like that? Yeah. And yeah. you know, a lot of people are kind of on the fence about that, too. So I mm-hmm. think we'll have to... Yeah, we'll look at that one. But yeah, they they say it goes too moldy, or the ants can chew through it, and they, mm. they still get weeds in it. So mm. it's weird. It's weird because I've never had that experience with. Yeah, have you ever with the polymeric? No, I mean I think it it uh, yeah it depends on the base and it depends on uh, yeah, so you know how much space right? and you do have to especially if you had a new patio you have to do have to reapply the polymeric sand and it it is a pain but um, you yeah. know what can you do. Yes. But I disagree <laughs> that, that, I mean, yeah, I think the ants, um, I think that's when it's not applied properly. Yeah, or, or the gap is way too big. Like yes. There's another factor that's causing sh- it not to sure. do what it's for supposed sure. to do. For sure. Yeah. So. yeah. So, yeah. So, again, if you're just joining us, we are talking nematodes. 
um, here on Down the Garden Path. And um, it w- they are being laid or sorry we'll recap that the japanese beetles that are ravaging our gardens and yards <laughs> are laying eggs in fu- in a fury and those will become white grubs and so that's what we're talking about to everybody but aside from the japanese beetles and those nematodes there has been advancements in other some of our other pests right where they've come up with nematodes that can also kill them Yes. How's that? Good intro? That's a great yeah. intro. <laughs> Segway? Good Segway? <laughs> Segway. There, yeah, there's a lot of different problems. Um, one of the big problems that uh, we get in the garden center is fungus gnats. Okay. So if you're not familiar with the fungus gnats, they're those uh, very small, black, to almost clear flies. Uh, they usually are around rotting organic matter or molds, mildews, algaes. We often see them in our house plants in the winter. But not free flies. They're do not fruit have, flies. Do we have nematodes for fruit flies? That's no. what I'd love. Oh that my gosh, somebody needs great? to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so they're not fruit flies, but yes, they tend to be um, the little gnats that sometimes if you keep your house plants outside right. and bring them inside or just from the dryness or if you bought a new plant, those new plants on sale at the store, mm-hmm. uh, come home with gnats. Yeah, yeah. And okay. they, they're drawn to those spaces that are a little bit overwatered and things are starting to break down. Right. Yeah, so they're those little black flies. And fruit flies is exactly what people describe them as. They're okay. fruit flies and they're in my window and they're all over my plants. Okay. Yeah. So we have nematodes for those. And Excellent. So, so I've always used the sticky traps. Right. But do you think, so the nematodes, is it similar? Like now you're putting it in your household watering can. Exactly. And watering the soil and watering, obviously, all your plants. Right, right. Okay. You can water all your plants. Um, the nematodes, uh, especially from a I see when you do open them for okay. the fungus gnats, they actually do come with sticky cards. Oh, okay. So if they do miss anything, or there's also still adults flying around the house because the adults live for a few days, a number of days. Okay. Uh, they will fly in and they'll basically get drawn to the sticky traps as they go to lay their eggs. Okay. And you're going to do the nematodes twice. So you're going to okay. mix them up according to the instructions, much like the the white grub nematodes. It's right. just on a smaller scale. I was just going to say, probably not this volume of water. No. Right. No. And you basically go around and you water your house plants, and they go and they kill the larvae. Okay. Uh, that are about five millimeters long. They crawl around. They're little white clear things. So if you pull out a plant and you see white little creamy white to clear with little black heads crawling around inside the soil. Yeah. yeah. Those are your fungus gnats uh, okay. larvae. And then they'll pupate and then they become the adult. So the they eat the roots and the root hairs and okay. the nematodes burrow into them and do their thing there as well. Okay. Uh, but the adults, you can get multiple generations going on all at once. Mm-hmm. So you usually use the, use the sticky traps in conjunction with the nematodes. And okay. the NIC nematodes, even they come with a pack of sticky traps just did like to stick around right right to help to with that yeah right. okay because their life cycles a couple of times or, or you can have multiple generations you do want to apply the nematodes once and then you're going to do it again two weeks later okay because there will be adults that you don't see that have laid again another eggs right that maybe the nematodes didn't get them all or they moved to another plant so you're going to just redo everything one more time okay and that'll usually usually get rid of them right yeah now is it something you should do um, like preemptively, let's say, like you bought a new new house plant from a box store or from a nursery or something, just to put it in just in case, or just wait till you see them. Yeah, I usually wait till you see them. If the plants aren't overwatered or stressed or or was wasn't very damp where you got them, or maybe you even bought them out in a greenhouse where there were weeds and moisture under the benches, you can sometimes have them come up from underneath that shady cool spot. Okay, where they're probably just happy to be there, but they've come up and they've found some plants. Okay, and they're doing things like that. So just take a look. Usually, if you unpot your plant and take a good look at the roots you'll usually see that it's extra moist or it's fairly moist right and you can usually spot one or two of those guys going okay and check if your plants if they're moist but they're kind of failing maybe it's over water but maybe you have some fungus gnats as well because these guys are eating their roots and mm-hmm. the adults are eating the tissue of the plants and the stalks and things like okay that. okay yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is a little plant, like gardener's secret to before you buy the house plant, especially for the smaller plants. It's hard to do with their big plants, but is to kind of slip them out of the pot and take a peek, yes. <laughs> right, and just see the condition of them. Even like in the perennials, right, flipping them over and yes. seeing how many roots are coming out the bottom. Yes, they should not be doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
So, uh, so yeah, so those are some tricks. And we were sp- speaking earlier about um, the, the, what I call mosquitoes on steroids. But you said those are the, so they the look like a mosquito, but they're giant. Yeah. And they tend to come out in the fall and tend to be really drawn to light, right? So you can't open your, um, <laughs> you know, if you open your screen door or your house door with the house light on, then, the, then these fly in. Or they, I find that then they're on the inside trying to get out to that yeah. light on the outside, <laughs> you know. So, but those are actually leather jackets, which just seems weird to me. Yeah. That's not what I would call them. Yeah. I mean, but okay. Yeah, so I don't nope. see a leather or a jacket. Or but a jacket. Yeah. Um, but there's a nematode for them as well. Right. Yeah. So they're, they're leather jackets or crane flies. They're, they're the long slender, like, I think they look like little Danny Long. Legs, like yes, flying, flying daddy. Li- <laughs> yep, that's another analogy. Yep. Yeah. So they they feed on the roots of grass, causing yellow patches and thinning, much much like the the grubs do. Right. But the white those other ne- nematodes won't touch these guys. So you have to have a specific. Right. There okay. is usually a little bit of crossover, but there, there is more of a again, it's the species of n- nematodes that will go after okay. uh, that group. But yeah, the female crane fly can lay up to three hundred eggs. Uh, so what you want to do if you see those or if you have an issue with those, once you start to see them, that's the time to lay those nematodes down. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so in the autumn, right after you see the flight of the adults, late September uh, to October is usually when the larvae are young enough and easy to control. Okay. And you're going to do it dead. You can do it again in the spring if you see uh, the little larva. Uh, but a higher concentration, even more nematodes, because as this larva uh, goes through its life cycle, it gets really thick and armored. That flesh gets really oh, strong, okay. and you need more nematodes to attack to actually yep. break down and get in there. Okay. So the best time is now, or coming up till now, in about a month, another month. Okay. Or once you start to see them fly, mm-hmm. and but not again in the spring, if unless you really need to. These guys usually cover about a thousand square feet. Uh, but 500 if you're going to do them in the spring because you okay. need more of them. Okay. Yeah. And there's like, they don't bite and they don't like, no. so it's more kind of like a little night and uh, light nuisance, I find, yeah. um, until they come out with like a, a nematode variety pack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Buy one package and get three types of nematodes. Um, marketing idea. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and you say that because um, NIC has told us that the, the, the one for white grub will usually. Very minorly, they won't do it like exclusively like the leather jacket. But if right. there are a few there, or sod webworms, which is another nematode we have, oh, okay, um, they will do a little bit of damage to that population. But it's not the best thing to control that whole population. Oh, okay, so okay, kind of, but yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Okay, we've got another question. Oh, uh, Patty is writing in. Hey, listening to your show from Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, awesome. welcome, Patty. Welcome. Uh, even though pesticides are still legal here for grubs, some folks are going the route of nematodes. Our pesticides are not like they were in the 60s and mm-hmm. 70s, being very potent and deadly to fish, etc. Um Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, sorry, I misread that for a second. Uh, but now they are th- more to save the environment, but do the job to kill grubs, their eggs, etc. And love your radio show. Oh, thank, thank you, Patty. You. Well, that's good to know um, that, yes. that it's spreading, right? Yes, it is. And and I have to admit that even like my guests that come into my garden center, mm-hmm. they have this image of the states with just their shelves are loaded with the deadliest of chemicals that wipe out everything and anything like instantly. And that's what they want. And then you get into our more natural or uh, more natural based solutions and, and they do work differently. They work, but they work slower or more diff. They, they, they do a different thing, but they still get to that end result. So mm-hmm. sometimes there's a little more time involved and it's not that instant that we kind of grew up with anymore. Right, right, yeah. for sure, for sure. But like so Patty, you make a really good point yeah. that back when that when the chemicals were still uh, just available, um, they were a certain level and now we've just made them stronger and stronger and people are relying on them, you know, much like we do for our body and Advil and Tylenols, right? Yeah. Like we just keep taking it and keep putting it on, keep putting it on and... And that's not good. So if we were better at maybe controlling it, and that's why here in Ontario and Canada, they've really um, come down on a lot of the herbicide bans. And, and, you know, and it's been a challenge. It's been ten over 10 years now, and it's yeah. taken everybody, you know, time to get used to it. But uh, I think in the long run, 
um, it's a good thing. And I think it's great that we've got some other so like it's one thing to take it away and, and not then not have a solution. But we've got some alternatives. So I think it's great that the nematodes are uh, succeeding at being uh, a solution. Mm -hmm. Although it does, you know, we really sh hope our show helps you because it is a bit of a learning curve and it's not as easy as, as treating with a chemical. Right. There's a little bit more work involved yeah. and it's more of a balancing than a just a wiping everything out kind of thing. That's right. But it's cool to know that you don't have to do it for th five days straight yeah. or, you know, all day long or three times in it one day, that type of thing. So really, you know, it's not so, so bad. No, no. It, it kind of has that, yeah, that misconception that yes. it's organic. So it's got to work. I got to do it all the time and blah, blah, blah. No, that's, yeah. that's not true either. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So... So, yeah. So what else do we have any other? Well, you mentioned the sod web worm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what? So what? Our poor sod. <laughs> right. It is. Uh, so, yeah. Sod web worms. Um, they all their adults are a moth, um, but they do have um, a, like a, a worm. Uh, oh, a larva that during early spring, the larva feed on the upper roots of the system and the blades of the grass. Uh, and they build little silken webs and, and things in the sunny areas where they can feed overnight. For, and they're usually there for about three to four weeks. Uh, in early May, they'll pupate. So this is going to be one we apply a little earlier okay. uh, than our white grub one. Uh, and then they become, uh, they pupate underground in little silks of cocoons and bits of plants and stuff. Uh, and after about two weeks or so, they become the moth in late July or late May, early June. And, and they can flutter around until about October. Oh, okay. So And people will say they'll go out at night and there'll be some, some like kind of silkiness on their lawn. And there's these little worms that are kind of like poking up their heads and like. Really? Yeah, they're like. Like almost like I guess I was out there. I know I, I can see them, and they were like they were kind of like crawling like around. When you said silky, like like um like spider web yeah, ish, almost like like a just a very light like webbish where they've kind of moved like oh. little strands kind okay. of around. Hmm. And then they're kind so of people like are paying way too much attention to their grass. But yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and they're kind of like going up and like breaching the grass surface and crawling around. They they described it to like dolphins. Like oh my gosh, and, and you can oh, kind of see them totally up creeping and, me out and okay. doing things. Mm -hmm. So I was like. Whoa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. So that's that's what that is. And okay. Yeah, we'll have sod sod webworms um um for that as well. So usually you're being applied in in early April or uh, April to early May to control the first generation, and that's before any damage is really observed. But another one can be done early July for the next generation. The okay. Are going to do their thing. All right. Um. Yeah. Okay. So. And lastly, <gasps> I think the birch leaf miner. Um, cause that like our birch trees were really getting, um, hit by the, that was one tree that everybody knew of that it was, oh, you needed a, a chemical to treat it. Right. Which was the yeah. bir uh, birch borer. Um, and that was, uh, you know, those trees really took a hit when we could no longer kind of paint our trees and the borer, you know, that starts at the top of your birch tree and kind of eats down and, and kills it. So I think they've raised and, and hybridized some more resistant birch trees. I know the ones I've been planting, the river birch, mm -hmm. are much more resistant to the birch borer. Yeah. Dakota Pinnacle is a okay. nice Okay. Is that a good nice one? Nice one, yeah. yeah. About uh, 25 to 30 feet tall and Okay, 15 to 20 feet wide. It's a nice columnar. Okay. Yep. yep. That's good. Um, but the other thing was the birch trees tended to have something called a leaf miner. Yeah. as well so now we've got nematodes for them yeah so leaf miners um you'll see usually like the elm leaf miner is one of the ones that'll go after them uh, and they they basically they burrow a little hole into the the skin of the leaf and then they eat the leaf tissue right in amongst the cell so some leaf so miners don't really like kill the tree but it's kind of like no, kind of just uh, um what's the word it's unsightly. aesthetic it's very aesthetic. Yeah, cosmetic and cosmetic there you go yeah, and, and sometimes you'll get uh, leaf miners that'll leave the little line, and then sometimes you'll get little um, uh, little bubbles like like on the the birch, right? You'll get little sections where they're they're all inserted in there, oh, and they okay. eat them, like a little bubble uh, in there. So yeah, so uh, they leave their 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 mines in about mid July, drop to the ground, and they spin cocoons and they pupate. And there's only one generation a, a year of those guys. Okay. Um, and now the nematodes the same idea. Yeah, so you're going to do them, um, but you're going to do them in the ground on the base of the birch tree. So it's not something because nematodes are soil creatures. Um, so basically once, uh, oh, where did I have my note here? Here we go. Yeah, so, um, oh, now I'm totally lost. 
It's okay. Um, so that they <laughs> I've also never done this one. So yeah, this one we've is never a new done one this one, me. but this is good. So that you also keep it in the fridge yeah. for a maximum of up to eight weeks. Don't freeze them. Yeah. Um, water below tree, one foot above. Beyond the tree drip line. Right. Um, once birch leaf miner guard is applied, a light watering daily for up to three to four days is required. Um, as, as like we mentioned, nematodes use the water channels to travel to find their prey. And uh, soil temperature must be about 10 degrees for nematodes to be active and able to find leaf miner larvae. Do not apply in bright sunlight. And uh, again, a cloudy day or late afternoon is the best time. And uh, they should not be mixed with other fertilizers or other uh, pesticides. And I'm guessing, too, other n- um, nematodes. Like, it's not the day to kind of put all three sponges in your in your bucket, right? <laughs> 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 Although, you know, hopefully they'll come up with a variety pack of some kind. But, uh, yes. So, very much the same. And putting it in uh, one liter of water and wringing out the sponge five to seven times. And, uh, yeah. So yeah. that sounds like it's very similar. It can be also applied with the hose end sprayer. So if you do have birch trees and you do notice that damage, or if you've just installed, you know, birch trees and or you bought a house, sometimes people move into a house and they're like, I bought it for these beautiful birch trees. And then look what's happening. What's happening? What did I do? You know, so this is something that not everybody knows about. And uh, it's great that uh, we now have something we can uh, try to control it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so the, yeah, so you're going to do that basically, uh, vacate their minds in the middle of July and drop to the ground or they spin their cocoons and they, they pupate. Uh, so we can do it again in, in that, uh, early May kind of time when they're, they're pupating and before they come out and, oh, okay. and the females will lay eggs and do their things and then they'll fall out. Okay. So that's what I was kind of looking for too. Oh, okay. <laughs> looking for the date. <laughs> more and more for the date. Like yes. Yeah. So it's not it, so. time of, the, so it's not the time of year to do that. Right. Um, but it's good. Like we've given you some information. It's definitely yeah. the Japanese beetle white grub time to do it. So time to get out to your local garden center. Uh, or big back store, just make sure you check on the uh, check that they're in the fridge and check on the best before date. You got it. Um, so we hope you enjoyed this episode and we gave you lots and lots of information. Yes. Right. So don't forget to look it up when we post it to That's right. rewind That's and right. re-listen. And what are we talking about next week? Uh, next week, I believe we have, uh, Oh, our fellow compatriot on the show. You got um, it. Stephen Biggs. Gary is going to be on the show. Um, he's going to be joining us to talk about his new book. Excellent. And we actually will have a book giveaway oh. as well. Ooh, so you'll have to tune in. You'll have to send Steve a question, I'm sure. Yes. Ask him about the new book. Um, definitely. I, I, I forget the title of the book right away. I know, me too. Oh, there we go. But uh, take it a look. Is it, it The Lemons? Is yes, yes. Lemons? That's okay, that's right. growing lemons. Growing lemons where I you know. don't think w- you can. That's right, growing lemons where you don't think you can. Yeah, and which is a fantastic book because that's one of the big questions we get in our garden centers. Yes. These citrus, how do we keep them? How do they come to fruit? So right. It's, it is a lot easier than I think we think. That's right, and because he's from Toronto, so right. he's in our area, and he's got written a whole book all about it. So, yeah, so, so. And he has a, his own show here. Once it, is he monthly, Gary? He is monthly. He's monthly. So and he's uh, so he's on uh, Reality Radio 101, the Garage Gardener. Garage Gardener's radio show. Yeah, Garage yeah. Gardener. Yes, right. perfect. Absolutely. Yeah, so he's going to join us next. He's going to call in, though. I couldn't convince him to oh, drive to he's Ottawa. Our, yeah. I know. He just I got back from vacation, he too. He did, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and he forgot to leave the book. Um, oh, so yeah, he no said issue. We, we'll give it a do it a giveaway and he'll mail it out from Toronto or so from downtown. So, so, that's nice. so yeah, so really looking forward to that show. And of course, sept- August 26th is our September in the Garden show. I don't know where the month is going, but lots is happening in the month, isn't it? Is. it? it is. I know it's kind of going fast. So I'm looking forward to keeping. So if you want to follow along with what's going on in my backyard or in my garden, uh, please follow along on my on Instagram or my website. Uh, I released our August in the Garden newsletter that went um, that has a lot of our tips, um, so you can check uh, check that out. So you can sign up for that on my website at downtoearth.ca with the number two, and again my links to Facebook and social media and Instagram are there, and our listeners can find you. Yes, at uh, naturalaffinitydesigns.ca. 
and uh, all my links to my Insta, uh, yeah, Instagram and, and everything is there as well. Excellent. And our past shows. We both have our past shows on our website. On website. Um, but please, uh, we really want you to subscribe and uh, listen to it on. Uh, it's much more convenient to listen to it on your phone. Yes, I it think is. So. Yeah. so. So subscribe, drop us uh, an email or a text and let us know um, I- that you're uh, or s- our post on social media that you're enjoying the show. So we want to thank everybody. We hope you enjoyed all this information about nematodes. That's it. That's right. Thank you, Karen, Larry, Mike, Monica and Patty for writing in. Thank you, Gary, for producing the show as always. As always. So thank you, everyone, for joining us down the garden path here on Reality Radio 101. Thank you for listening to Down the Garden Path with your host, Joanne Shaw, and Matthew Dressing right here on Reality Radio 101.